So this is a Kawai baby grand that's just come into stock. So this is not typically how they come in, but so you can see there's a bit dusty on the inside. The inside will need a good cleaning. It's a bit faded as well, so it's going to need to be polished at some point. Um, all the keys in the action will come out and be regulated. All the keys leveled. They're not too bad, actually, but I will level them anyway. So, as you can see, it's just a bit cloudy. And at the back, it's a little bit more cloudy at the back because I think that's where the sun's been hitting it. So, all that should polish out. So, the first thing is to do is to take it all apart. So that's most of the piano all stripped now. I've still got to take the pedals off and take the screws out of there and the, uh, the hinges. And that needs to be taken apart as well. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much what it looks like with everything off in its basic form. It's just easier to get in there and clean under the soundboard and the pins. It gets a bit dusty over time. Uh, that's the action. That's what we'll need a bit of work as well. So this is just a time lapse of me cleaning the inside of the piano. Um, so I've got the hoover and the brush just to get around the pins and then just cleaning the, bit of the, the strings up with um, a scotch pad just to brighten them up a bit and get some of the corrosion off them. Um, finally just wiping the frame down. Uh, this is polishing, so first I just give the panel a wipe down um, just to get any bits off and any muck. Um, then it's a, a polishing mop, uh, quite a coarse wool sort of polishing mop um, with a cutting compound. And then I'll finish up with a polishing compound which is a bit finer at the end. And then I'll just wipe the whole panel down. Um, everything, every panel on the piano had to have this done to it. So I thought I'd do a separate video time lapse for the full board, which is the bit that goes above the keys, because there's a little, a little bit more that goes into this bit. Um, so the first thing I'm doing is just polishing it up, and I took the felt off at the start, which runs along the keys. So I intend on changing that. I'm just giving that an extra polish now um, at the bottom because over time the fingernails scratch into that lacquer. Um, this is the new felt going on, so you have to glue it in the whole panel at the bottom and then cut it to size and then that just fits on just like that so that's all the panels polished and the pedals all done and we felted there's another panels just lying around everywhere so I've just got to put everything back together now and yeah it's so looking a lot better that back part which was all faded it's all shiny again now because it's been buffed. The inside. Yeah, that's the next job to do. And then it's time to work on the action, which is still over there. So that's the cosmetics taken care of. So everything's been polished and cleaned. And the felts have been changed where they need to be changed. So as you can tell, it's looking like a new piano again. There's no fading anymore. Most of the tiny scratches have been removed. The back's shiny again, as it should have been. So yeah, now we've just got to do the internal mechanism. So we're about halfway there on this refurbishment. Um, so you've seen all the polishing on the outside, getting out the tiny scratches. Um, cleaning the inside, uh, doing the felt, doing the pedals, polishing the brass. Um, and that's kind of about halfway there for me. It's um, 
the next part is to get it playing nice. So now it looks nice, um, there's no fading anymore, and now it's just got to play nice. So the first thing you'll notice, it's quite out of tune. <laughs> So that's going to be the second part of the video. So the first thing we're going to do is level the keys. Um, so all that's going to come back out again. Level the keys and then see where we go from there. So this is the action, which is inside of the piano most of the time. But obviously when it needs to be worked on, it comes out. Uh, so most people will never see the inside of the piano. The, They'll see up to here because that's where the board finishes. Uh, the board sort of closes down like that over the keys, and all this is pretty much hidden. Uh, but there's a lot of work that goes into getting this right. Um, so you play a key here, and you don't even think about what actually happens. But there's there's a lot of complicated movements which all have to be finely adjusted so that it plays right. So in short, if you press that down. That pushes the cap stand up on the whipping, which is that there. And then that pushes on the jack, which then lifts the hammer. This is the knuckle. And that lifts the hammer, just like that. And then when you get so far, this is what's happened on the other side. The jack will trip out. So you've got the, that's a little regulating button there. The jack trips out from that little slot, just like that. And then the hammer drops down a little bit afterwards. I don't know if you could see that, it just drops down a tiny bit. Whoop. And uh, yeah, the idea of that is so the hammer gets all the way, well, close enough to the string, about a millimetre, and then that drops down. So if it didn't, then the, the hammer would just hit against the string, and the string wouldn't be able to vibrate, so it would have no sound. It would just go boop, and that's it. So it needs to trip out so the string can go and vibrate afterwards. So that's pretty much, in a nutshell, what it does. The first thing I'm going to do with this before I clean it is um, you can see there's like a little indentations on the hammers where they've been hitting the strings. I'm just going to reface them. So refacing is uh, you just sort of file, file away the felt again, reshape it, just like I've done on these end ones. And they look new again. That's a genuine thing you can do just to give the piano a little bit more life, um, bring the sound back into it. So, it's not a lot. Some pianos are really, really bad. You can kind of see it on the uh, bass side a bit more. But, uh, yeah. So that's the next job for me, before I take it apart and clean it. was a quick time lapse of me doing the top section there. It's pretty much the same across the whole thing, so I don't think there's much point in doing a time lapse on all of it. But, um, so you can see before and the after, it's got rid of a lot of those dents in the hammers. It'll just improve the tone of it, really. Okay, so there's a lot that went into that time lapse, so I'll break it down a little bit. Um, so the first thing I did was took all of the top stack off the action. Then I took the keys out, I blasted it with the compressed air just to get any dust out. Um, and then I um, sanded the keys down. So the sides, sometimes 
you can get the black marks on the edges um, from years of playing. The dirt just gets stuck on the side of the keys. So I've sanded the sides of those just to clean them up. Um, the cap stands have all been cleaned. Underneath, I took the old felts off um, and changed them for the new ones, which are the same size, thickness, so I shouldn't have to do too much there. Um, the pins which the keys sit on, they've been polished, and the pins at the front, which they sort of guide the key to where it should be, they've all been polished as well. Um, so the next thing to do is to level the keys. So I'm just about to level the keys on this. It's not too bad actually as it is, um, but we just basically put this level on like that. Uh, we'll use that side on this one. If, if you want a bit of a curvature in the middle, you turn it that way. So I think that's what the Steinways use. Um, so just have a bit of a curve in the middle. It's on a cow white, it's gonna be straight. So um, yeah, just we do that and just check if there's any gaps here, I think there might be some in the middle, um, then they're not quite level. Um, we just raise them up, and the way we do that is you have to take the key out, and that's why I've not put the hammers back on the top, because it just gets in the way. It's, so we simulate the hammers being on there by adding weights on the back. Um, so that just keeps the, the keys up. If the weight wasn't on there, then it would probably fall back down and be like that. So... Uh, we just put pieces of felt, uh, sorry, pieces of card underneath this felt to raise the key up. So the key sits on that. So if we lift that higher, then the key is going to get higher here as well. So there's different thicknesses of the felt. So that's your cardboard. That's the thickest. Um, and then it goes right down to, that's the box of all the different thicknesses. It goes right down to the paper, um, which is usually what you do at the end just to do it really finely. Uh, but yeah, you get the cardboard, this is the green ones, and then the blue, and then the, and there's, I don't know what you call that, kind of an off yellow, ivory colour. But uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the process of it. It can take a while if the keys are really out, but this one's not too bad. So that's what I'm going to do now. So the action's all back together now. I've levelled the keys. Uh, I've done the height of the sharps as well. Um, I've set the key dip to 11 mil just for now. And I'm just going to do the rest of the action and then finally tune the key dip at the end. Um, so I've got a good amount of aftertouch. So it would be below 11 mil, between 10 and 11, um, wherever it feels best. So um, yeah, my next job is to set the height of the hammers. Um, so I'm going to set it to 46 because that's given me quite a good sort of a good after touch really relative to everything else so it lets off quite about there so it's perfect and then you've got a tiny bit of after touch after that enough that I can regulate afterwards um, so 46 is going to give me a good starting point I think so what I do is I set my guide so I've set that to 46 I've set that one there to 46 as well. Uh, so I just do the, the end hammers on each section. Um, and then in the other room, I've got a level that goes across from one to the other. And then I can adjust all the ones in the middle so they're all at the same height. So usually after that, I do the let off. Um, so that's doing the adjustment here. So the hammer gets as close as possible to the string before it goes down a bit. Um, but it's actually not too bad. Uh, it's almost spot on. So what I'm doing instead, which I've noticed on this piano, I don't know why, um, but the drop screw doesn't seem to have been regulated. So after the note is let off, which it, it should drop down a little bit, but in this case it's not. Um, so if I can show you before and after, um, an extreme sort of 
sort more. Sort that out. There we go. Um, so if I do the sort of extreme and screw that down a lot. A little bit more so it should let off and then drop just a tiny bit so that's that's an extreme case there let's do that so that's too much it should be about should be about there just a tiny bit down so that's where it should be um, I've got to do that on every one because at the minute there is no drop at all it's just going up and staying there so you see the difference drops down maybe a little bit more and that one's just staying up so it needs to be screwed down so that's a bit of a there we go so I've got to do that on all of them because none of them have any drop so after doing the drop screws um, I'm actually going to do the let off now because what I've noticed is it wasn't as good as I thought it was. Um, what I usually do is I usually do the let off first, which is the uh, so it's supposed to get to a certain distance with, away from the string, and then it would drop down. But because there was no drop, it was hard to know where that let off was. It just kept going and going. Um, so now I've done the drop actually feel that sort of click in the key so I'll do the let off and then I'll have to do the drop screws again after that um, just to get it right because at the minute the drop is regulated to where they're letting off but obviously the let off isn't at the right height so after I've adjusted the let off I'll have to adjust the drop screw again so this is just going to show you the let off so at the minute as the hammer goes down it's letting off about, say it's about five millimeters away. So I can easily fit this tool in between the hammer and the string. Um, you should be getting it to about one millimeter. So as you can see that, yeah, it's quite a way off. Is that one millimeter? Um, yeah, that's a one millimeter stick. So I'm just gonna adjust that upwards. Uh, so doing that little screw here, so this is the screw here, so if I turn that up then that will trip out later which will make the hammer get close to the string, so I think it's A, so I'm just going to lift that up now and you'll see it gets even closer. should be about there and then obviously the drop is too much now so it should be dropping about there but it's going a bit further down so yeah I'm just going to do that to all of them now and get the let off at the right point so that's before a bit far away it's after so that will just give it a bit more response um, and you'll be able to play a lot more quietly as well so that's the let off sorted so let me show you here where's that one so it's going a lot closer to the string now before it drops down i will just sort out those drop screws again there we go because some of them are dropping a bit too far afterwards so it's not too bad actually now but just some of them so there's that and then I will probably just give it a quick tune in just to bring it up to pitch but I'll show you that afterwards so that's the adjustment done for the drop screw so it's coming down just a tiny bit now um, I'm just going to do the what's called the after touch um, so once that drops down there should be a tiny bit of play in the key and um, just uh, so it should go down about another millimeter um, and you might just notice the hammer come back up a tiny bit after that um, the middle is not too bad actually but the the base um, has probably a bit too much 
I have to touch only slightly. So what we do is just add little washers in under there. Um, this, they are supposed to go under the green felts, uh, but I, I usually do it now and then just swap them over at the end, um, just to do it that way. So it saves me having to keep moving them out and then back in again. And uh, so, yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. So you go to a key, so it drips out, and then you can feel there's a bit too much happening there. Um, I do this by feel mostly, um, so I just know that it's not right, and I can check it with a key after. Um, so there's none under there. And then you can kind of see the height difference as well. So this should be pretty much the same depth. Trips out, tiny bit of after touch. Uh, it's a level with that, and that's about right. So, I'm just got to do the rest of them, and then I'll do the sharps afterwards because they're a bit harder to get to. So, uh, yeah, so that's your after touch. So, that's the letter and the drop sorted, and then there's a the tiny bit of after touch after that. And that's about right. So now the next thing we're going to do is the back check, um, which is if you play the uh, note like that, it's sort of the resting position of where the hammer is. And it should, after you lift the key up a tiny bit, uh, lifted it up a tiny bit, it should spring back up again, but it's not. So that's not right. So it should be closer. And then when you lift the key up a bit, you see how the hammer lifts up? And it's ready to be repeated. So that's the correct way. And that's what it was before. So the adjustment for that will be on the back here. Let me bring that action out. And so I don't know if you can see, but behind the hammer, this thing here is called the back check, so they need moving forward. Um, so they're falling way too below. Um, so I've done C, so you can kind of see the difference. So it's it's a lot higher now. And after that, I've done the regulating screw here, which increases the spring tension. So after you after it's checked, it should lift up a tiny bit. It is on that one, but it's probably a bit too slow. So it should be more like that. You see the difference? And that just resets the jack then, which is the jack is under the knuckle, ready to be repeated. So before, after. So I've just got to do that to all of them now. So this is me just doing those back checks. Um, usually I do uh, so that I do all the C's actually in, when it's inside the piano um, just to get them at the right height because they can vary from the bass to the treble because obviously the hammer sizes are different. Um, so I usually give them a bit more distance in the bass and then a bit closer at the top. But that's just because of the hammer sizes. And uh, this is just me doing the springs now. Um, so the, that little regulating screw I showed you. So that's all the back checks done and the springs. Um, next thing I'm going to do is tune it uh, because it's quite far off pitch. So I'll show you on here. I'm going to press G. And if it was at pitch, that line should be pointing towards the zero but as you can see it's way off so if I get to that no G um, so it should be there so you'll be able to hear the difference so that's what it is now and that's where it was. So before, after. Okay, so I'm just going to get all the keys up to pitch. Um, actually, I'm going to take it over. Um, 
a little bit over. So what happens, the strings will stretch and it will go back down a bit. And then the second time I'll finally tune it, but I'll probably leave it overnight just to settle the strings. So that's the piano all put back together. I've just got to tune it now. Um, so all the action's been done inside. It's all clean, it's all regulated. And uh, yeah, I've already pitch raised it. So I brought it up to pitch. It's still sounding a bit honky tonky because it needs a fine tune. So that's it, pitch now. <laughs> time lapse on this because I need the phone. Uh, I've got a tuning app on the phone which I use as well as doing it by ear so I won't be able to time lapse it. But hopefully you'll be able to tell the difference afterwards. So this is the final video. Um, that's the second tune I've just done. So it could do with a third because it was really out of tune. Um, the original owner said it's not been done in 10 years so it will sound a little bit off still but I think it's good enough for a video. So uh, yeah, this is the final result. Mm -hmm.